Google Bard has just been announced and it is going to take over ChatGPT4. Let's take a look at it. So here we have this prompt where we're gonna go ahead and enter in brainstorm some ways to help me read 20 books this year. And you can see it has a response similar UI to ChatGPT and it lists down 20 ways you can go ahead and accomplish that goal with a thumbs up, thumbs down, and option to replace it again. So let's take a look at what is BARD. So essentially it is a LLM, which is a large language model, which a lot of these AI products are similar to, and it's a lightweight and optimized version of Lambda. And they're going to be updating it with newer, more capable models over time. And guess what? Since this is with Google, they're going to have a ton of data. It's going to be pretty interesting to see the speed that BARD advances compared to GPT. And we're just gonna have to wait and see that. And at the moment, BARD isn't perfect yet, which you will see in just a second. So let's, for example, take a look at additional examples. So the large language models will not always get it right. Feedback from a wide range of experts and users will help BARD improve. So for this example, they have this prompt that says, I can't seem to keep my plants alive. What are a couple of easy indoor plant options? And then it lists a few plants and be focusing on this one. Number four is easy plant, Zamicucalas, Zamicucalas. Not sure exact pronunciation, but essentially this plant is easy to care for. And the issue is Bar got things wrong. For example, the scientific name plant is actually Zamo Kukalas Zamifolia. So the last word right here was incorrect. So that is something important to note with these AI softwares is information is not 99%, 100% accurate. It could be slightly off. So if you were actually reading stuff online, for example, a blog post, anything, do be careful, especially if it's important information that you should know. For fun facts, this, I mean, if you got the name wrong, 99% of us wouldn't even notice, but if you're like a plant specialist, then you might know. But for other things that are much more important, such as health-related information, finances, etc., do be careful when you're seeing things online. Now, here is one thing. Look at this, give me ideas to introduce my daughter to fly fishing. Now, check this out. Instead of giving you just one option, it gives you multiple drafts. So for this example, it's showcasing three, but ideally in the future, they could include an infinite amount of drafts that you could set maybe even a uh, setting on. But for now, look at how much easier this is to go ahead and enter something and give you three different options. Because if you ever use ChatGPT or even a similar software, you probably asked it to do it again or make it better. So whatever question you ask it, write me an email response to my boss. And it looks okay, but it could be better. So you respond, add these details, make it sound like this. And here we have this feature already added into Google's bar. Now, one thing is, will GPT copy Google's technique? Cause this is actually really interesting. I would love to see this in uh, these AI software, but so far it looks like Google has already started that trend. Now here is what's very interesting is that Google little icon that we saw from the beginning example, what they're stating is it's a search check. So you could click on the Google icon and that it will showcase you other sources on the web and basically click Google it to see suggestions for queries and the search will open up the new tabs. You can see relevant results. So actual articles discussing whatever topic that you're searching, because that is one thing that I usually do with ChatGPT is I'll cross check online and see if this information exists. And sometimes I find zero results. So it starts to make me question, where did they even get this information? Was it from some archive that was years ago that I can't even access on Google? That is something you have to think. And this, this is going to be revolutionary since Google is Google. ChatGPT is ChatGPT. So they won't have the same access as Google, but they can just directly link to their search results from their data versus GPT, where it's a separate company. So with AI, there's always some risk involved. There's some bad players and addition, things people can say and not say. There has to be some sort of filters put and also needs to have them know, hey, this is not always accurate. So 
they even have the notification saying it's an experiment but we don't always get it right they might give you inaccurate information and you can also check google button to confirm or deny whatever the response is and it'll get better with feedback which i think that specific line is going to be quite interesting in the next few months because we saw the level that gpt evolved into in literally months google at the level of data they have the size of the company the money they have who knows how fast bar is going to excel to the point where it's going to be scary and look google even utilized bard for their own blog posts talking about bard giving a fun way to wrap up the blog post and then they showcase a little response prompt and there again you can see the google option so that you can cross check the data with the actual links which for this example doesn't really make sense now let's take a comparison with bard to gpt and even some other ai tools since bard is similar to them but we'll see if they actually are even comparable so here this is an article from TechCrunch, and they state that Google Bard lags behind GPT and Claude in head-to-head -head comparison. And if you're not sure what Claude is, it is also a very similar GPT style, Bard style response, which I'll show you in just a second. So here's the first test that they tried was to write a checklist for a recruiter aiming to attract diverse talent to their tech startup. And what they summarized is that GPT made the checklist with the boxes, which I've actually tried that before with a little uh, shopping list and the others seem to not have done what they actually said. So, however, the suggestions were still good, but let's actually see what they responded to. So here's what Bard stated. They got the bold fonts. We have five options, small descriptions afterwards with a introduction sentence and a concluding sentence. Still looks like a solid response. Looks like an early GPT, uh, chat GPT style response. But now let's take a look at Claude. So Claude has a similar intro sentence don't see any bolding of the intro words, which I actually like Bard's response better because people don't like to read and I'm 99% sure you're not even gonna read all of this. You're probably just going to look and listen and I'm not even gonna read this, but I can see that the actual responses do seem to be a little bit longer and they actually have six options this time with the ending conclusion sentence, so very similar layout. Now let's look at GPT-4. So GPT-4 is significantly better layout it even showcases short concise titles define diversity goals with three options to check with exact steps that you need to go ahead and do such as identify the groups set specific targets and timeline to get the goal and that's a quick summary and you can read here even more details but look at this look at the numbers we went from five from bard six from claude and now we're up to ten so Google GPT and Claude, it seems like GPT-4 is currently the forefront, the winner, but Google has already started. Claude, we'll have to wait and see, even though it is also a very similar performing model, but let's actually take a look at Claude too, since I'm sure if you haven't heard of it, you might be wondering what is Claude in there. So here is Claude, and it is a next generation AI assistant, and a based on Anthropics research into trading helpful, honest, and harmless AI systems. So, so here we can see the visual. Can you write me a job description it looks like? And here it writes it out quite nice. And you can see here it's asking for specifically on a product designer and SaaS. The UI, I personally like this UI, it has more of a friendly response and design layouts. You can even see it's very similar to GPT. And then also Bard obviously has the Google design style to it. But you can even see there were other suggestions on the front as well. But in short, it's very similar to GPT and Google Bar. Now, the one question is, which one will come out on top? And which one will you use? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.